Good morning, BoatingBanner.com fans. Captain Larry here. Chapter 21. Okay, we have officially started on the Wellcraft project. Uh, I did the backrest. As I mentioned, there really would be no, no benefit for you seeing that as we have done that before. And anything that had, we will see in here. So you, we'll really cover both uh, with one, one application of the uh, techniques here. This is the bench seat. So this is what we're going to try to get done this morning. I'm going to be diligent and work hard and try to get this done here quickly so we don't drag on. Uh, again, I'll have to unfortunately be bumping in and out uh, to do all the different pieces of this. But uh, I'll show you what I'm trying to do and we'll see how quickly we can get it done and how accurately. Welcome, welcome aboard. Let's get going here. Okay, the first thing I want you to notice here is that the foam is one of the weaker ones that I have seen. It is really doesn't have much spring left on it. And uh, so it's definitely going to have to be a build-up program here. Uh, so this is really good for us. I guess it will show you how, how I do that. And you may want to use the same kind of technique, so you may have a different idea, or you may want to buy a piece of foam. This is right on the border of doing that. But this large of a, this is a huge bench seat. It's very expensive. I have no idea. I would guess uh, probably two or three hundred dollars just for this piece of foam because uh, of, of how big it is. So uh, that's a waste of money. So let's see if we can't uh, build this up and get it right. A uh, couple things you want to go, before you get going though, let me show you the, okay, here's our, here's our back, back rest portion of the seat. And uh, what I want to show you here, is what we want to try to do, if at all possible, let's check that here, is get these, you see my seams here, uh, you see the seams that were on here. They're a little askew right now, but what you try to do when you have a backrest bench combination like this, you try to get the, the, the colors and the seams parallel. So if you're looking from the front of the boat to the back, for example, they all look like they're kind of one, one unit. So the things that we'll have to worry about here are the obviously the pleats. Try to line up the pleats on where they should go. And then the two blue strips. We like to have the blue strips obviously here on the uh, seat portion that will match up to the uh, backrest. So uh, we'll see how close we can come to that. It doesn't have to be exact, but it's nice if it's in the ballpark, so it doesn't look uh, too hodgepodge. Uh, if you want to see the, uh, the backrest, look at chapter 20. Uh, I did this yesterday, a couple other pieces, small pieces. But this came out really nice. It's a lot easier, if you notice, compared to the other backrest that we did. It had the uh, square, more of the square look to it, where it had the piping on the top and the flat side. But this is simply rolled over. All you do is roll these over on both the bottoms, the bottom, of course, it's the top. So there's no lines to worry about, about keeping your line straight. So you just kind of pull it and get your wrinkles out and you see uh, nice, nice foam came out. Nice to put a little extra batten in there so we can uh, have a nice firm. The only thing uh, that was a little struggle was, you see, the, uh, there is boxing on the, on the two ends. And uh, one funny thing, I, and I still don't know to this day, after all these things I have done, when I cut the uh, original product out to make the template, uh, you would imagine everything's going to fall perfectly square. But it doesn't. And a couple of, not all the time, but a couple of these, times have happened, and it happened on this one here. When I, after I had put this on, I tacked it on the, I, I don't uh, sew the, I don't sew the boxing on until I am sure 
that were you know centered and everything's right and it's in the right place and all that. So I did all this sewing, which is flat, laid it down back on here, and I had one inch extra on this side and about two inches on that side. Where in the world that came from, I don't know. Uh, it, it baffles me. And uh, what you need to do is, of course, it's overlapped here, and you need your seam over here. And you go over there, so you obviously have to cut back to here. So I, what I simply do is I tack, and I push, and then I just take a marker and trace the overhang. And then just cut the overhang off, and then I sew it. But that baffles me. I mean, the only place where you should be picking up seams, I mean, uh, distance is the seams. Like I was, leave, I was using uh, half inch seams in this one. And if you use your half inch, it should be uh, perfect. Uh, maybe I didn't. Uh, anyway, <laughs> I ended up with like say three inches extra, one on one, on one side and two on the other. So we, we modified it, but those are the kind of adjustments you need to make. I'm back. Here is the here is the bed seat. It's terrible, terrible condition. You can see the. I know you can see the color. That's what it's supposed to be. And because they have to wrap around where the sun didn't get it, well, where the sun got it, we have a salmon, salmon-like color. Oh well. Okay, I took this off. It came off very quickly, and I did the speed, speed take off. This one, I just loosened up a few of the, the uh, staples and pulled it. And as you can see, most all the staples stayed in. But it's not a problem, especially with these, because these are foldovers. So I just simply measure these. And uh, they had a lot more fold over in that backrest than I wanted anyway, so I cut it a little shorter. But anyway, so again, <coughs> we are not going to do the two blues. We're going to do one blue like the backrest. Uh, we will do this. There's no piping. Uh, we do have the boxing again on the side. So that's something we're going to have to be cautious of. And again, uh, it's on both sides. You have to do it uh, uh, on the front there. So I will uh, not sew the boxing on initially until we lay this all down. Again, I have marked, I don't know if you can see that on the I have marked the center here. So uh, front and back so we can make sure that we're in the center and we're working our way out. So that's kind of where we are. Let's build up the uh, foam. The first thing I do is I put this half inch, this is half inch foam, it has no, uh, it has no uh, backing on it or anything like that, I'm just going to glue it on. But this will give us, start giving us some firmness. So we'll just try to break the to break the edge of there. there we go. Okay, again, we just want to tack. We don't need to do a lot of glue in there because the the full, I mean, the uh, vinyl is going to hold this off. But uh, Break over the <coughs> break over the front here. Now let's pull that down smooth. Let's go the other end here. This will add some additional depth to it, and it will definitely smooth out, smooth up these 
drives sure we got that cover both front and back looks good I just feel that totally different absolutely fantastic stuff <coughs> Again, we're just trying to tap. Here we go. Now this will let this set up a little bit, and then we'll cut around these corners, take out the excess, or we'll let it fold over, and the base is all set. Look at that. Beautiful. That's going to make a nice, comfortable seat. We'll see you in a little bit. Welcome back, Boating Banner fans. Here I am again. Uh, I thought I would show you the uh, center pleated plate uh, to this project. I, I had done this before in the other uh, Mariah project, but this one's a little bit bigger and so I thought I'd just repeat it again if you, you can skip over it if you don't want to see it. But uh, one thing that I did notice uh, that I had to make a quick change was that the pleats on my backrest and the pleats on the, uh, the bench did not line up and not only that they did not line up on the bench seat so uh, the chances obviously of getting them parallel with each other was impossible <clears throat> so what I decided to do is I'm going to use this now as my as my template so I I just simply rather than measuring like I did with that one I just simply took this piece I attached a quarter inch scrim with the uh, fabric on the downside and uh, put it right up against them both sides back and front and just trace the lines so the lines should line up so we'll see how this all works out I haven't done that before and hope hope I'm not making uh, a big mistake on that so let's get going on this one here okay again we're going to try to start in the middle See if we don't, hopefully we don't catch on things. That's what messes me up most of the time. Okay, we'll pull this over a little bit. Gonna hold this down, follow our line. pull apart and push down on me because that scrim wants to fight you all the time and give you puckers and everything else so pushing down spreading apart gives you a little better chance of having a nice prize. camera there. Hold on a second. There we go. Go 
put that on the other little one here. Put that way that on that line. I still like to reverse. Doesn't hurt. And then push down. Oh, that's fresh. Keep this thing smooth. side ones. Now remember we cut this one a little bit larger, about, about an inch on each side, so that we can trim it off to make sure we have the right width. Okay. A little wrinkly now, but of course once we get it on the get it on the, uh, the boat or the board, then we can, of course we can we'll stretch out and we'll get those all cleaned up. So that's our pleated center plate. And I'll finish cutting out the other ones and uh, we'll look at assembly. Talk to you in a minute.